Mr. Sergeant of Arms invite the members into the chamber and close the doors. I hereby declare the House of Representatives of the 113th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee now in session. Will the members please stand with the visitors in the gallery. Please stand and remain standing through the Pledge of Allegiance. Representative Boyd will introduce the chaplain of the day. Representative Boyd, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I stand before you today uh, actually filling in uh, for our friend and colleague, uh, Mr. Michael Hell. And uh, Representative Hale, being the, the humble spirit that he is, he actually didn't tell a lot of people. I just found out yesterday that there was an accident at his funeral home, a formaldehyde spill. He breathed in a, a toxic level, and he's been in the hospital this week uh, getting treatment. And so I would ask that you would please keep him in your prayers. Uh, and if you have his cell phone number, it'd be nice if you reached out to him and let him know that we're praying for him. He does hope to, uh, to get to go home today and be back with us next week. And so uh, he asked me, because I used to represent Cannon County, and I did get to know Pastor Al Bug when I when I represented Cannon County. Um, and so Al's family is originally from Cannon County, but he was actually born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, he graduated from uh, Michigan Christian College and then later came back to Tennessee and graduated from Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, he preached in Northern Michigan for six years and in 1988, uh, when his father had moved back, uh, he moved his family back down here to Cannon County, Tennessee, um, where he has lived since then. He worked with the Woodbury Church of Christ for 17 years and then has since moved to the Smith Grove Church of Christ, where he has been for the last 13 years. He has a wonderful family that I, I got to meet a few years back, and he's married to his lovely wife, Kathy. Uh, they have eight children, one of which is uh, currently serving in the Army Station at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and he and his wife just celebrated their 31st, uh, 35th wedding anniversary last week. Uh, and I would ask Pastor Al Bug, when you do open us up in prayer in just a moment, if you would please remember our friend, uh, Representative Michael Hale. Uh, Reverend Bug, if you'll open us up. Well, thank you. It's an honor for me to be here and an honor for all of us to stand before God and seek his blessings for today. When I was young, I was told to get an idea and wrap my life around that idea, and I would be able to move forward in life. And so I took study to show yourself a proven to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When I got out of school, I realized I needed more than knowledge. Uh, I realized that even good people don't always get along with each other and wait to the last minute to solve their problems. And then I got married and I had eight children, and I realized I needed something more than knowledge. I needed strength. I needed faith. And I needed somebody to help me. And contrary to popular opinion out in the lobby, I am not Santa Claus. I am Al Bug. And so I want to share with you, I had to get a new verse as I grew older. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Then I realized I needed one more verse. Psalm 71, verse 18. Lord, when I'm old and gray-headed, don't forsake me until I show the next generation your power and your strength. Let's seek Almighty God. Our Heavenly Father, our Holy God, we come before you. We're thankful that we can come before you. Lord, I'm thankful that I live in the United States of America. I'm thankful that I live in the state of Tennessee. So many people that I talk to, Lord, desire to be here. Their whole goal in life is to be able to move here. But Lord, I pray for those men and women who stand before me, who stand before you, that you'd help them and lead them and guide them so that my children and grandchildren might say the same thing, that their desire is to be right here. We're thankful, Lord, that you have given us the blessings of life. We pray for those who are in the military. Pray that you, as you send, as they're sent out, that they might return home. We're thankful that we can live a free life even during times of war, not even realizing that we're at war. But we know the things that are necessary for us to go forward. Pray for the decisions that are made right here, Lord, in this chamber. We pray for the future. We pray for the future of America. We pray for the future of Tennessee. We thank you, Lord, most importantly, for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, for it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Representative Boyd will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Attention, salute, pledge.
Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Well, roll call. Ms. Clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Speaker, 93 members present. Let the journal reflect. Representatives Hurt, Hale, Hakeem, and Garrett are excused. Next order, Mr. Clerk. Welcoming and honoring. Representative Love, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request that the Sergeant of Arms escort our guest into the chamber. Mr. Sergeant of Arms, please escort the guest to the well. Representative Love, you're recognized. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. I, th I think we need a few more down here. <laughs> but I request, Ms. Speaker, that you would uh, I request the clerk to read the resolution. Mr. Clerk, read the resolution. House Joint Resolution 805 by Representative Love, a resolution honor and congratulate the Pearl Cone High School football team, TSSAA Division I Class 4A state champions. Whereas the members of this journal similarly are pleased to especially honor and commend those successful high school teams that through their magnificent exploits bring honor to Tennessee and serve as exceptional ambassadors for this state. And whereas the Pearl Cone High School football team achieved an extraordinary level, extraordinary level of success during the 2023 season, winning the coveted Tennessee Secondary School Athletic Association Division I Class 4A State Football Championship. And whereas the Pearl Cone Firebirds vanquished every opponent for the undefeated season on their way to the Blue Cross Bowl Championship game on December 2nd, 2023 at Finley Stadium in Chattanooga, where they beat Upperman in a hard fought battle by a score of 36 to 27. And whereas the victory saw Pearl Cone High School claim its third football state championship in school history and its first since 1997 as the team ended the season with a perfect record of 15 and 0. And whereas throughout the playoffs, the Firebirds played with heart and determination in each round, defeating Lexington 42 to 2, Station Camp 41 to 16, Marshall County 41 to 21, and Haywood County 48 to 20 on their way to the championship game. And where state championships are achieved only through hard work, dedication, and the ability to work together as a team and excel with the cooperative spirit, the Firebirds exhibit, exhibited each of these rare qualities during their championship season. Whereas we find it appropriate to acknowledge and applaud the football players of Pearl Cone High School for serving as exemplars of the high quality of youth of Tennessee. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives, the 113th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, the Senate concurring, that we honor and congratulate the players, coaching staff, team support staff, administrators, cheerleaders, and fans of the Pearl Cone High School football team on winning the 2023 TWSAA Division I Class 4A State Football Championship.
Representative Love, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the resolution uh, speaks so much of their accomplishments on the field, uh, but it doesn't list their accomplishments off the field. And I give credit to the principal, Dr. Harrington, uh, our director of schools, Dr. Battle, and Coach Bonetti for that. Uh, just to be able to walk through the hallways at Pearl Cone, you see excellence being carried out. So much so that when the National Black Caucus of State Legislators was convened in Nashville, this was the school we chose to have our corporate sponsors come by and interact with those students. We thought so much of this high school that of all the high schools in Nashville, this was the one where we want our members to interact with the students. So I just want to lift it up also, um, Mr. Speaker, as, as an example of their great academic uh, excellence today is to pursue these other uh, exploits. I would like to ask if I can get the director of schools or the coach or the principal to say a few words. That's okay, Mr. Speaker. Yes, they are recognized. I also like to thank y'all for inviting the team, uh, my administrator, Dr. Harrington, Dr. Battle, superintendent. This is an honor for the, this is a community, for the high school. I've been teaching at Pearl Cone High School since 2002, y'all. And I won't go nowhere else until I probably retire. Uh, that's what my community uh, that I believe in. But also these young men have accomplished a lot. Even though winning 15 and 0 is not the biggest thing I look at. You got 15 kids gonna have opportunity to sign scholarships going somewhere to play ball. Also, we have probably about six kids, at least five to six kids that will graduate in the top 10 in the class. We also have a human award one on this team as well. Uh, that's a big honor we have in Metro for academics and leadership and character. Um, but first of all, I'd like to thank God for giving these kids the opportunity to have this blessing right here. Thank y'all. I'm Dr. Harrington, principal of Pearl Cone High School. I want to thank you all again for having us and uh, honoring us. Again, these students have worked extremely hard both on and off the field. Their coaches have been diligently uh, ensuring that they are both academically inclined, as you have heard, as well as athletically. And so if, with this group of athletes that we have, we have 95% um, of them all are academically like there and they've been offered D1 scholarships, but few have been offered at Vanderbilt for academics, Belmont uh, yeah. University. And so these kids are working very hard to exemplify our school values of pride, which are professionalism, respect for everyone on and off the field, investing in themselves, their futures, dignity for all, and with all things we endure. And they have done that. So we thank you for having us here today. Good morning to everyone. Um, first and foremost, thank you all for your continued leadership on behalf of the state of Tennessee. Um, I'll just be extremely brief. We have a mantra in Metro National School of every student known. And part of their work is making sure that we know our students both in the classroom um, and on the field and on the courts. And so we're really excited about um, their achievements. As you can see, we're celebrating both the victory in the state championship, but also the academic pathways and career pathways of these wonderful students. So congratulations to the entire Pearl Cone High School community, to the administrators, to the coaches, to the young men who are exemplifying greatness in everything that they do. Thank you so much. Representative Love. Speak if you would, would you please come down and take a picture with the team?
Representative Whitson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I re request the Sergeant at Arms escort our guests into the chamber. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, please escort the guests to the well. Representative Whitson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request the clerk read the resolution. Mr. Clerk, please read the resolution. House Joint Resolution 968 by Chairman Whitson and others, a resolution to honor and commemorate Down Syndrome Awareness Day in Tennessee, whereas Down Syndrome is a naturally occurring lifelong gene genetic condition occurring in one of every 100, 800 live births worldwide and is the most commonly occurring chromosomal condition, and whereas people with Down Syndrome are living longer than ever before, and the life expectancy of individuals with Down syndrome has increased dramatically in the recent decades from 25 years in 1983 to 60 years today. And whereas all individuals with Down syndrome are unique with variable levels of learning, communication, and physical abilities, and a range of physical characteristics and health profiles, and whereas access to research, healthcare, early intervention, speech and language, occupational and physical therapies, inclusive education, and employment and social opportunities are imperative to the development, progress, and independence of individuals with Down syndrome, and whereas advancements in Down syndrome research has given doctors, therapists, and educators new tools to care for individuals with Down syndrome so that they may live healthy and fulfilling lives, and whereas children with Down syndrome are often fully integrated in social and educational settings and increasingly go on to graduate school from high school and attend post-secondary education programs, and whereas while placement in the workforce remains a challenge, career opportunities are improving, and adults with Down syndrome have attained a variety of positions bringing enthusiasm, reliability, and dedication to their jobs, and whereas advancements in education, research, inclusion, advocacy, and support programs have been a tremendous impact on the opportunities for individuals with Down syndrome to live fulfilling, successful lives, and whereas further education, awareness, and support for Down syndrome is still needed today to ensure the dignity, dignity success, and inclusion of individuals with Down syndrome. Now, therefore, be it resolved with the House of Representatives of the 113th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, the Senate concurring, that we hereby join with the citizens of our great state as they commemorate Down Syndrome Awareness Day in Tennessee on March 21st, 2024. Representative Whitson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In honor of Down Syndrome Awareness Day, I'm proud to recognize the Down Syndrome Association of Middle Tennessee and honor their mission that promotes awareness, acceptance, and inclusion of those with Down Syndrome. Today, we will share a very special performance with our members. We have the Portera Ensemble collecting, uh, collaborating with the Down Syndrome Association of Middle Tennessee to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. These chamber choir professionals and their extraordinary friends from the Down Syndrome Association have been singing and uh, signing together for the just the past three weeks, which you would think that they have been together for years. They will be sharing just one song that, that they will be performing at Down Syndrome Awareness uh, World uh, Celebration Day. We are excited to have their very first performance together right here today. So with that, I'd also like to recognize them and their artistic director, Jason Shelton. And I will turn it over to Jason. The sad eyes don't be discouraged or oh, I realize it's hard to take courage in a world 
full of people you can lose sight of it all in the darkness inside you can make you feel so small but i see your true color shining through i see your true colors and that's why i love you so don't be afraid to let them show your true colors, your true colors are beautiful like a rainbow. Show me a smile, don't be unhappy, can't remember when I I saw you laughing If this world makes you crazy And you've taken all you can bear Just call me up Because you know I'll be there And I see your true colors shining through I see your true colors And that's why I love you So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors, your true colors, true colors are shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. Your true colors are beautiful Like a rainbow Representative Whitson. Thank you, members and uh, friends and family. And I just, Jason, your team is amazing. And thank you for working with this great group. And I just want to recognize a dear friend, Alicia Talbot, the Down Syndrome Association of Middle Tennessee. She has made a difference, not only for our family, for Kaplan's family. We appreciate you. Rep Representative Whitson. Uh, Mr. Speaker, would you come down front and join us for a photo, please? Absolutely. And also, why don't we have all the members come up and circle around as well? So.
Welcome and honoring anyone seeking recognition. Representative Wright, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today having been seated in this legislative body six years, knowing for the most part we are one large family of brothers and sisters. Today I want us to remember one special brother turning to page 66 of the Tennessee Blue Book in memory of Carson William Beck. March 21st, 1962, June 4th, 2023. He was an American lawyer and politician. He was a member of the Tennessee House of Representatives from 2015 until his passing in 2023. He represented District 51, which is composed of parts of Davidson County. I ask for a moment of silence in memory of our brother Bill. Thank you. Representative Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a young man that's here today. He's going to be a page, and you all may know him. He comes and visits with us quite often, and that is Max Mumpower, our comptroller's son. So please use him as a page. Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a page for the day, and I'm looking for her. She's back here in the back right corner. You can stand up there and wave to us. She, uh, this is Eliana Page. She is in middle school at Avery Trace Middle School, where my kids went to school. She is the essay contest winner this year, got first place, will be honored by the Secretary of State uh, this, uh, this, or later this morning for her essay on civics and civility. And I told her that we all need a copy of her essay. If she could send it to our offices, that would be great. Her mom and dad are up in the gallery uh, today as well. I'd hope you uh, make her feel welcome. Congratulate her on her essay winner. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Ritchie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, uh, I've got a page here today, uh, all the way up here from Maryville, Mr. Ethan Elder. He also is uh, the state winner for our civics essay with the topic was why civility matters. So if y'all don't mind making him feel welcome, give him a round of applause. Thank you. Represent Doggett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With me today, members are uh, folks from Giles County Leadership Group. They're up here in the balcony to my right, so please help me welcome them to the General Assembly. Representative Raper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I also have a constituent that is a page today. Uh, she was back there and I asked her to come out and wave to everyone. Her name is Ellie Lee. She is also a, a civics uh, contest winner and she and her grandfather are here today. So make them welcome to the house floor, please. Representative Parkinson, uh, Representative Helton Haynes desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have four pages here, and I want us to use them all. We have Kobe. Kobe, raise your hand. We have Kennedy, and we have Max, and we have Nylon, Lamar. So use Nylon the most, though, y'all. All right? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> okay. All right. He's starting already. He's starting early. Representative Warner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a group here today with the Tennessee Promise, uh, Brandon, Bailey, and Payne. Please make them feel welcome, members. Representative Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members, I join my colleague, Susan Lynn, State Representative Susan Lynn, as we welcome uh, members of Leadership Wilson. They're up here to my right. If you could make them feel welcome, please.
Leader Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a very special constituent with me today, Mr. Rowan Nordwall. Rowan, if you can stand up up there in the gallery. So he is a graduate of Finishville High School last year, and in less than one year, Rowan is over halfway through his welding program at the TCAD Hartsville campus. He's currently working on advanced MIG processes, including short circuit, spray arc, dual shield, and flex core welding. He's currently on track to graduate early with an A average in his class. Members, please make this wonderful young man feel welcome. Thank you, Rowan. Representative Butler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a page with us today as well. Uh, Miss Sadie Peak from Rickman Elementary placed third in the K through second grade 2023 civics essay. If y'all would please make her feel welcome. I think her mom and dad are up here in the gallery to our left. Thank you. Representative Vaughn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I have joining me my lovely wife, Jonna, along with uh, my friends, the Yule Horns, Frank uh, and Grace. Frank is a Shelby County Election Commissioner uh, up here seeing what we're doing. So if we could welcome them uh, today. Thanks. Yeah. Representative Vidal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members, I just want to say, as you know, I lost my mother a week ago this morning, and I thank you all for the condolences, cards, messages, and hugs more than anything else. She would appreciate it, and my family appreciates it also. Thank you. Representative Dixie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I come to you today with a heavy heart. Yesterday, my wife's uncle, he was found dead in his home uh, yesterday morning. So I asked for everyone to keep our family in your prayers. His name was uh, Ricky, Ricky Miles. And so thank you for giving me a, a second to just speak about him. And I, I really thank you. And please just give me a, a moment of silence in your hearts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Darby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, if we give a warm welcome to Central Christian Academy. Uh, we've got a great group of fourth graders brought to us by Ms. Megan Carden. Appreciate y'all. Sincere thank you for educating our kids. Thank you. Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I wanted to also honor uh, our friend Bill Beck, and I've got two of his other good friends, uh, Representative Whitson and Representative Jernigan. I would just say this, um, the one thing we all remember about Bill Beck is that infectious laugh. So I appreciate that we did a moment of silence for him, but I want you, when you laugh today or you find yourself hearing somebody else laugh, that's truly how you can remember Bill Beck, is that infectious laugh and being happy and joyful. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Pearson. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I would like to wish my lovely fiance a happy birthday, uh, Oceanae Argillium. Um, it is, yeah, that she is up there. My best friend in the world. Um, Thank you for, you probably be at this Capitol as much as anybody in the public has ever been here uh, in committee meetings, in the gallery. Thank you for your support to get us elected. Thank you for your support in this fight and in this movement for justice. We experience so much, uh, we, we create joy. We, we also experience a whole lot of pain and our family watches that as well virtually, but you have to witness it. And you're just an amazing partner to go through this journey with, uh, whether our bills are getting rolled or we're dealing with racism or any of those things. Uh, you are my friend and my partner in this journey. And it means the world to me uh, to have you here and to be in this work uh, together. And so happy birthday and I love you so much. Representative Hazelwood. And Moody. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to introduce you all to Ms. Margaret Brown. She is my page here today from Lookout Mountain Elementary School. Her father, Ben, is uh, upstairs in the gallery. Margaret won an essay. Her topic was kindness. We should probably all read it. Uh, but welcome her, please. Representative Hemmer. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wanted to welcome two pages today from uh, sixth grade at Bellevue Middle School, uh, Caitlin Carando and Annabelle Chambers. Thank you. Representative Jernigan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There was a passing in my community this week. Uh, the House had recognized him as the unofficial mayor of Donaldson. His name is Willie McDonald. He was a pillar in our community. Speaker, he was born in Monterey, Tennessee. And uh, he he was 91 years old. He dedicated his his life, his uh his resources, his time, his money to the community, he'll be sorely missed. And I can have a brief moment of silence. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Capway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate you. Members, Chairman Sapicki and I would like to recognize and welcome some students from Spring Hill High School and Hampshire High School in Murray County in the gallery to our left. Please stand, guys. Y'all make him feel welcome. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Leatherwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to welcome today a page from my district, Zoe Meredith, and she actually shares a first name with my fifth daughter there, and she's also one of the essay winners in the statewide contest. So. Y'all make her feel welcome and her dad up in the gallery. Thank you. Representative Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I am here to wish my wife a belated happy birthday. Yesterday she celebrated her 29th birthday. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you. Representative Love. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as we are honoring Bill Beck today, certainly I'm grateful for the many years that I had a chance to have him sit next to me on this House floor. Do want to thank Metro Parks uh, because yesterday they planted a tree in his honor uh, on behalf of uh, Arbor Day in East Park. And our, our own colleague, uh, Representative Moody, was there also along with David, David Bone. So thank Metro Parks for that honor for Bill Beck on yesterday. Thank you. Representative Travis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, out in the halls, I have my wife, Laura Travis, in her 100th tour since I've been elected. So if you see her today, say hello to her. She'll be here when we, when we adjourn, I'm sure. So I would just like to thank her and give her a round of applause because she's out there listening. Thank you. Representative Moody. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, along with Representative Love, um, I was able to go to the memorial yesterday for Representative Beck. And, and I know sometimes we were kind of the odd couple, but Representative Beck and I got to serve many, many years on criminal justice sub and full. And, and just from that time together, had a, a great friendship. And unfortunately, in his sudden passing, and I was on a mission trip, and, and I could not get back. So I appreciate the notification of that memorial yesterday to get to see Pam and meet the grandbaby, the little granddaughter that he knew he was going to be a grandpa, but uh, unfortunately, she was born two months after he passed away. So uh, thank you for getting to share uh, sweet memories and I know everybody has a great story of their own with him. So uh, we miss you, Bill, and keep his family in your prayers. And Mr. Speaker, if I could have one more. Chair I can put you back on the list. Representative Sparks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Saturday morning I got to, got to go visit Walnut Academy, Youth Academy. I want to thank Eamon Norman, a pastor. And these are kids in, in juvenile custody. And my office sent them a game of chess, a couple games of chess, and the kids have been playing chess. And I was asking the um, correctional officer, Keishan Steele, I said, man, what is the key to turn these kids' lives around? 
He said, man, these kids have to have hope. They have to have mentors. They have to have some love. And the one thing about these kids, he was telling me they had one child over there that had no family, no family. But I want to challenge all my representatives that have courage and conviction to go visit these juveniles and listen to some of these stories where there's childhood trauma and their lives. We've been so blessed to have fathers in our lives and that safety net of a parent. But y'all give it up for our mentors and coaches and correctional officers that do make a difference. Representative Lynn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Please help me welcome my mayor from Mount Juliet, James Manis, and County Commissioner Lauren Breeze to the House today. Representative Moody. All right, members. I wish I knew everybody's birthday, but Chair Lady Hazelwood and I happened to find out today that Reuben Sanders one of our sergeant at arms, his birthday is Sunday. So please rise, cl clap, and give him a happy birthday wish. Representative Hardaway. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Bill Beck, I had the pleasure of serving uh, with him on criminal justice forever. And our running uh, mantra was to build, B-U-I-L-D, a better capital, B-I-L-L. -L. And then we would giggle like uh, we were in elementary school and make it happen. So I, I miss Bill. And like Powell said, that laugh, you, know, you miss it even more. Thank you. Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I almost missed the group. Uh, Leadership Bartlett, I don't know if they're still in the gallery or not, but uh, they were here, and I uh, want to, you know, send a shout-out to my friend and constituent who's part of that group, to Lisa Franklin. So if y'all will, make them feel welcome. Hopefully they'll see it or hear it. All right, anyone else? Representative Raper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I may have, uh, not have mentioned earlier, and I regret that I didn't do so, uh, my, the name of my constituents, L.E. Lee. So uh, thank you, L.E. I'm sorry uh, I didn't mention your name. Anyone else under welcome and honoring? Seeing none, next order, Mr. Clerk. Introduction of resolutions. Lear Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that all resolutions properly filed be introduced pursuant to rule number 17 and placed on the consent calendar referred to the appropriate standing committee. With objections, so ordered. Next order, Mr. Clark. Senate Joint Resolutions Congratulatory Memorializing. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With all Senate Joint Resolutions Congratulatory Memorializing, honor that has to be placed on the consent calendar pursuant to rule number 17. With objections, so ordered. Next order, Mr. Clark. Resolutions lying over. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With all resolutions lying over, we refer to the appropriate standing committee. Without objection, so ordered. Next order, Mr. Clark. Introduction of bills. Clear Lambert, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move this House bills 3000 through 3002 be introduced and passed on first consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Next order, Mr. Clark. Senate bills on first consideration. Clear Lambert, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move the Senate bills 1062, 1591, 1594, 1633, 1638, 1787, 1811, 1998, 2098, 2105, 2188, 2243, 2256, 2316, 2337, 2349, 2496, 2503, 2525, 2571, 2585, 2605, 2691, 2741, 2764, 2771. 2810, 2822, and 2840 transmitted to the Senate to be held in the desk pending third consideration of the companion house bills. Without objection, so order. Next order, Mr. Clark. Senate bills on second consideration, House bills on second consideration. Clear Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move that House bills 2998 to 2999 be passed on second consideration to be held in the desk referred to the appropriate standing committee. Without objection, so order. Next order, Mr. Clark. Petitions and memorials, reports from standing committees, reports from select committees, calendars. Mr. Speaker, the House has a consent calendar. Chairman Zachary, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've been passed to the consent calendar on third and final consideration. Keep it rule 50. Gentlemen, moves passed to the consent calendar. Probably seconded. Mr. Clark, any objections have been filed? Mr. Speaker, item 45, House Joint Resolution 1099 has been objected to by Chairman Faison. 
Anyone seeking recognition on the consent calendar? Seeing none, any objection to the question? You want to be recognized on the consent? Representative Pearson. Are you able to bump something now, or do I need to come fill out a form? You got to fill out a form, but we're about ready to vote. Representative Pearson. I can, I can run. All right. Anyone else seeking recognition on the consent calendar? Seeing none. Any objection to the question? Seeing none. We're voting. All those in favor of the consent calendar, vote aye when the bell rings. Representative Clemens, for what purpose? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Leader. I appreciate your comments. Godspeed. Was there, was there a question there, or you just want to be ruled out of order? Did you, where'd you buy that tie? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, we have another objection on the consent calendar. Item 41, House Joint Resolution 1095 has been objected to by Representative Pearson. All right. Any objection to the question? Seeing none, all members in favor vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Ayes 93, no days, one president. I, I voted. received constitutional majority. I declare consent counter passed without objection. The most Rick Sears table. Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, the, the House has a regular calendar. Call out first bill, Mr. Clark. House Bill 465 by Representative Jernigan and others relative to motor vehicles. Mr. Speaker, the Senate bill is on the desk. Representative Jernigan, you are recognized here in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to substitute the form to Senate Bill 517. Representative Jernigan moves to substitute the form to Senate Bill 517. Paul, second seconded without objection. So ordered. Representative Jernigan. I move passage of South, uh, Senate Bill 517 on third and final consideration. Representative Jernigan moves passage of Senate Bill 517 on third and final consideration. Bobby Second, Mr. Clerk, call it First Amendment. House Transportation Committee Amendment Number 1, Mr. Speaker, same as Senate Amendment Number 1. Chairman Howe, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to withdraw. Without objection, Amendment Number 1, withdraw. The next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Representative Jernigan, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members, this bill is amended, will require the Department of Revenue to annually cross-reference with the Department of Health, of the Office of Vital Records, to verify that the owner of each disabled parking placard is not deceased. If they're found deceased, it will invalidate the placard beginning January 1st, 2025. And members, our goal here is to make sure that these placards are not passed down as heirlooms. And that's something we, we, we did a trial run on this and we we had 3,000 of them taken off the streets for people that were already deceased. So, uh, but Mr. Speaker, with that explanation, I'm happy to answer any questions. Representative, my motion. Representative Jernigan renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Holsey, you're recognized. Oh, uh, I do, Representative uh, Darby's. Yes, sir. Representative Darby's microphone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just had a question. 
I've never dealt with parking enforcement. Is there a database where, where it would show if you invalidate this certificate or this placard, how would somebody know that it's been invalidated? Representative Jernigan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So they're good for two years. It just would not be able to be renewed. It'd be, it'd be canceled. So when they go to renew it, it'd be canceled. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, any objection to the question? Oh, Leader Camper. Representative Powell. At Chairman Clemens' desk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So in consultation with my good friend, Representative Whitson, um, and knowing how much Representative up here has done for this community, those folks that have accessibility issues, uh, I would request that we would roll this a week so that we could properly recognize my good friend, Representative Jernigan, and name this act after him. And with that, I would ask we roll this one week to add an amendment to name this after Representative Jernigan. Without objection, rolled one week. Representative Jernigan? I will consider that friendly. <laughs> It's, it's gone. Yep. One week. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Oh, Mr. Clerk, call the next bill, please. House Bill 1848 by Representative Parkinson and others relative to adult oriented establishments. Mr. Speaker, Senate bills on the desk. Representative Parkinson, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to substitute and conform to Senate Bill 2663. Representative Parkinson moves to substitute and conform Senate Bill 2663 without objection. So ordered. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 2663 on third and final consideration. Representative Parkinson moves passage of Senate Bill 2663 on third and final consideration. Blame second. Mr. Clerk, call First Amendment. Mr. Speaker, no amendments filed. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill requires adult entertainment or uh, entities and establishments to post on the outside and the inside of each bathroom, each entrance door and exit way to the establishment assigned, showing the phone number for the Tennessee Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline. With that, Mr. Speaker, I renew my motion. Representative Parkson renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Sapiki, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I may be out of order here, but members, we have leadership. Murray is in the house today. If you could please stand, let us recognize you. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, any objection to the question? Seeing none. All those in favor of Senate Bill 2663, vote aye when the bell rings. All those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Pal aye. Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Eyes 91, no days. Senate Bill 2663, having received a constitutional majority, everybody declared pass without objection. The most rigged series table. Bob, next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2780 by Representative Parkson, relative to children. Representative Parkson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of House Bill 2780 on third and final consideration. Representative Parkson moves passage, Bob, second. Mr. Clerk, call the First Amendment. House Civil Justice Committee Amendment number one. Chairman Farmer, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to adopt and defer to sponsor for further explanation. Chairman Farmer moves adoption of committee amendment number one, probably seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of committee amendment number one say aye, aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. You adopted. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Representative Parkson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill requires that if a person is convicted of parentage fraud, they will have to pay restitution to the victim of that parentage fraud. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I renew my motion. Representative Parkson renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Mr. Representative Pearson. Thank you, Speaker and uh, Sponsor. Can you explain to me what parentage fraud is? Representative Parkson. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, uh, Representative. Last year we passed a bill uh, defining parentage fraud. That's when someone intentionally deceives an individual and has them to sign on the, onto the birth certificate or 
an individual signs onto the birth certificate knowing that they are not the father or the parent of that child. Representative Pearson. Thank you. How many people does this impact a year? Representative Parkinson. Thank you, uh, Representative. I don't have the answer to that. Representative Pearson. So last year when we passed the bill, and I think a lot was happening that day, we didn't know how many people were being impacted by this. Do you know how many people would be impacted by this legislation? Representative Parkinson. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the measure I can give you. One third of the individuals that have signed on to a birth certificate are not the actual father of the child. One third. Representative Pearson. And as I understand it, we've criminalized people if they don't know who the actual father is or something like that. Um, and now they're going to have to pay restitution. Is that correct? If that name is incorrect? Representative Parkson. Thank you. No, no, that is incorrect. The, the, this is an individual who intentionally tried to deceive a person and, and to say that they're the parent and they're not the parent. Representative Pearson. The challenge that I have, Representative, is we don't know that number is one thing. You said a third of people, that's a very high number, 33% of folks are signing birth certificates that isn't their child. But we don't know the implications that this would have or any potentially positive effect if the idea is that somebody who was uh, forced, as you might argue, to put their name on the birth certificate um, was then forced to pay child support. But we don't even know if this is happening in our state, according to what you've said. And so I, I, I'm really challenged because I don't want a punitive law. I don't want to support a punitive law against mothers in particular who might not know who the father is or the parent is, or they assume that it is this particular person. And then they take them to court and say, they lied to me. They intentionally deceived me. And that, that just really concerns me. So go ahead. Representative Parkinson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Uh, and so let me, let me clarify something you said. I didn't say that this does not not happen in our state. This absolutely does happen in our state. And, and the reason why I even brought this bill is because I, well, actually, let me, let me clarify something else. This bill doesn't speak to, to, you know, the crux of what you're saying. Last year's bill spoke to the crux of what you're saying when we passed uh, a definition for parentage fraud. But the reason why I even brought that bill was because I was in the uh, barber shop and a young man said he was, he, he was glad I was in there because he was trying to find me. And he went on to tell the story about, you know, him and his girlfriend, they, they had a baby. Uh, the baby was uh, right at five years old when his uh, girlfriend's mother, the grandmother of the baby, told him that it was not his child <clears throat> and that, that it was the child of her ex-boyfriend who she had been seeing for a long time. He went and got a DNA test. And when he took that DNA test to, to the courts because she was putting him on child support, the courts told him that it doesn't matter if he's the child's father or not, he's gonna to have to pay child support for this child for the next 18 years. He ended up going to jail because he, he didn't pay the child support. He lost his license, lost his job, and his whole life was turned upside down. So that's how we got there. So this is not for, uh, you know, um, this is for people who, who knowingly, knowingly deceive an, an individual um, uh, and tell them that they're the father. Here's the other thing, too, that's important to note. Um, you know, it's not just the fact that they've deceived that, that father or, or, or who they thought was the father, but they're also robbing the child of their inheritance. They're robbing the child of their DNA. They're robbing the child of possible health benefits because if that child needs a lung and they have the wrong father named and, and they knew that that wasn't the father, that child could, could die in his latter years. So that's what we're doing. Representative Pearson. Thank you. And just with the last seconds, I think I appreciate what you're saying. And I appreciate the story that you shared. The challenge still is then penalizing the mother for the five years of child support or something like that, taking that money now out of the home and giving it back to this individual who it really could have been an accident that she did not know. Uh, that doesn't fix the problem, right, ultimately for her. And so that's why. Representative Hardaway. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I think the sponsor already knows that uh, I objected to the 
send mommy to jail bill from last time. And this one seems to be along the same lines. If the statute of limitations, uh, does that kick in on this? If so, how long? Representative Parkinson. What statute of limitations are you talking about? Representative Hardaway. That's my answer, thank you. And who receives restitution? Who has a right to bring the action? Representative Parkinson. The victim. Representative Hardaway. And who would the victim be? The payer, the child, the state, if there are benefits? Representative Parkinson. Thank you, sir. In, in, the, in the original legislation, and Ms., Mr. Speaker, I would like to stay on this bill, but in the original legislation, it, it defined parentage fraud as an individual who intentionally defrauds a person for property by having them to sign onto the birth certificate. So that individual that was deceived of property, and property could be money, is the person that will be paid restitution for that deception. Representative Hardaway. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to stay on this bill too. And that answer, uh, I didn't follow. Uh, so I'll, I'll list again, would it be the, uh, the parent that was paying child support? Would it be the child who's receiving uh, the benefits of the child support? Or would it be the state uh, in an effort to recoup child support if there was some type of state benefit involved? Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I've already, I appreciate the D on D crime, first of all, but I've already answered that question. Right. Representative Hardaway. Thank you, Speaker. And I, I appreciate the answer to a question I haven't asked. Um, so if we're looking at the impact uh, on the child and everything that we do is supposed to be in the best interest of the child, can you help us understand how this is in the best interest of the child? Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I'm about to run the clock because all of these questions could have been answered inside of our caucus meeting, but you chose to be the individual that you are. Representative Parkinson, yes, let's, sir. let's stay on the bill. Yep. Let's Thank you, sorry, bill. Mr. Speaker. Um, so this, this legislation, again, was brought because individuals have chosen to defraud other individuals and, and cause them to either lose property, or finances, or in other good things that they may, you know, have been that may have been important to them, or possibly even their other children. And it's sad and unfortunate that we, we have people that will stand up here and 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 this is on the bill, and 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 be okay with a child losing possibly losing their inheritance, their identity. We hadn't even talked about their identity. An individual, a young man, a young lady that grows up and, and, and doesn't find out who they truly are until their, their father may have passed. They could have possibly lost an, an inheritance from that father or that parent that was truly their parent. Now you wanna talk about criminal, that's criminal. And then not to mention, if this person that was intentionally defrauded of their property and their, their, and, and their money, it could have been money coming out of their family's household. It could have been money coming out of another child's household. So, so we have to keep all of those things in, in, the, in, in the forefront of our mind as we're voting on this bill. And I will leave you two seconds to ask anything else you want. Representative Raper. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the previous question. Previous question has been called. Is there objection? There's objection. <laughs> We're, we're on the board. We're on the board. It is March Madness, by the way, so. We're voting on previous question. All those in favor of previous question, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Has any member which changed their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Ayes 44, 43 nays, two present on voting. Previous question fails. <laughs> Representative Travis, are you on to be rolled somewhere or you will have your next? <laughs> uh, Representative Travis, you're next. Are you? You were next. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call previous question. <laughs> we can't we can't go back to back. All right, we're moving on. Representative Holsey. Um, I cancel. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Gillespie. He passes. All right, Representative Shaw. I was going to go to the previous question, can I? Lear Lambert. Move previous question. Well, we're quite not there yet. Lear Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I know there's been a spirited discussion on this debate, on this particular bill and debate, but I will say this. Look, I, I have a gentleman in my district, you and I have talked about this when you filed the original bill, who was in his 60s before he found out that the daughter that he had raised to adulthood and who had bore grandchildren for him that biologically was not his daughter. Now, that's his little girl. They, they are family. That's his little girl. Um, but to find something that out, that late in life and that late after whatever had happened had happened well, was devastating for that family. And I know he wouldn't mind me sharing that today. Y'all don't know him. Uh, but he shared that with me. And, and this is something where people should just be straight with each other. Just be honest with one another when you're talking about especially kids. And that's all really this bill is about is that if there's any chance whatsoever that the child that has been born to someone is biologically not someone else's child, just be honest and have that conversation before the intricacies of life kind of get, get, a, get involved in it. So thank you for the bill. I appreciate it. And uh, at this point, Mr. Speaker, you seem to have several others on the list that could potentially make a motion. Representative Zachary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My previous question. Previous question may call. Is there objection? Seeing none, we're voting. All those in favor of House Bill 2780, as amended, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Let the journal reflect. Representative Whitson's excuse. Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Ayes 87, six nays. House Bill 2780, having received a constitutional majority, everybody declared pass without objection. The motion to reach this table. Bob, next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2676 for Chairman Williams and others relative to higher education. Chairman Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage on third and final consideration of House Bill 2676. Chairman Williams moves passage, probably second. Mr. Clerk, call First Amendment. House Education Administration Committee Amendment number one. Chairman White, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It does not rewrite the bill, so I move to adopt and defer to the sponsor for further explanation. Chairman White moves adoption of committee amendment number one, probably second. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of committee amendment number one say aye, aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have to be adopted. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Chairman Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, several years ago, this body passed a bill that was called the FOCUS Act, which gave more autonomy to our institutions of higher learning across the state. After several meetings uh, in appropriation sub last year and in conjunction with work from the, uh, from the Comptor's office, this bill seeks to further improve higher education across the state by making a few changes. First of all, it would simplify the institution's process by which we review 
and approve a list for this body to fund for capital projects. Secondly, it facilitates a less cumbersome way for institutions of higher learning to be able to approve different degrees for institutions of higher learning and remove those. In the instance, if a business moved to your district and they wanted to uh, add a new curriculum to meet those business needs in a shorter period of time, they could, in fact, do that. This also puts uh, uh, reconstitutes THEC the THEC board for with three members from that our governor's appointment, three members from the Senate Speaker, three members from the House Speaker, and the three constitutional officers and their designees. It also uh, ensures that TSAC is consolidated uh, within THEC. THEC. THEC will remain to do most of the data collection or all the data collection that we do across the state as it relates to how we uh, communicate about the Complete College Act, the outcome-based formula, and how those formularies are funded with the state and it gives autonomy or freedom uh, to those institutions of learning to set their own tuition rates. With that, Mr. Speaker, members, I'm happy to answer any question the members might have. Chairman Williams renews this motion. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, now on the desk, we have uh, Amendment 2 by Representative Pearson. It was just filed, Mr. Speaker. It's untimely. Representative Pearson, you're recognized. Thank you, Speaker. And uh, I hope that is a friendly amendment sponsor. Looking at the board composition um, for uh, the commission that's being vacated, It'll be 13 voting members of the commission consisting of folks from the Speaker of the House, Speaker of the Senate, the Governor, Comptroller, uh, and other things. But just wanted to make sure that the board is representative of the diversity of our state. And so a lot of the boards and a lot of the uh, codes that at least we've had before us has just stipulated inside of there that it has a diversity of people from across our state and cross sections of our state. And so that's all the amendment would add in. I move for consideration. You've heard the motion, probably seconded. We're voting for consideration of amendment number two. All those in favor of considering amendment number two, vote aye when the bell rings. All those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Travis, no. Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Uh, it's 1973 nays. In accordance rule 60B, having failed to receive the necessary two thirds, the motion to consider amendment number two fails. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, there's no further amendments. Chairman Williams renews this motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Love. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and sponsor. Thank you for your presentation of the bill. I do know the challenges that our schools have, especially with the capital projects, having uh, an LGI in my district, sometimes you're eight on the list. By the time you get up to one, you might not need that particular building anymore. And so I do hope that this will help with the process. I hope it brings some clarity to it. Did have some concerns about the bill, but I'll listen for any other questions out there. But thank you. Chairman Williams. All right. Representative Marsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll call previous question. Previous question being called. There's objection. We're voting on previous question. All those in favor of previous question, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Aye, 72, 19 nays. Previous question prevails. We're voting on the bill. All those in favor of House Bill 2676 as amended, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Aye, 69, 20 nays, two present, I voted. 
House Bill 2676 has received constitutional majority. Everybody declare pass by objection to the motion. Rick Sears, table. Call the next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2382, but Chairman Crawford relative to campaign finance. Chairman Crawford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of House Bill 2382 on third and final consideration. Chairman Crawford moves passage. Probably second, Mr. Clark, any amendments in file? Mr. Speaker, Amendment 1 by Representative Pearson. Mr. Speaker, it was not timely filed. Representative Pearson, you recognize. Thank you. Again, I think this is a, a friendly amendment, Chairman Crawford. In this legislation, colleagues, you'll read that the county administrator has to do one or another thing. They have to ma send mail, sort of via snail mail or first class, or they send an email. The reality is a lot of things can get lost in email, and so this would just make it and, so that the uh, election commissioner would have to send an email and they would send the first class mail so that people wouldn't get unnecessarily or accidentally fined because something went to spam or junk or something like that. So with that, I renew my motion. I see Chairman Carr. You, get you move consideration. I move consideration, thank you. Yes. You've heard the motion, probably seconded. We're voting for consideration of amendment number one. All those in favor of considering amendment number one, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Ayes uh, 21, 71 names. In accordance with Rule 60B, having failed to receive the necessary two-thirds vote, the motion to consider amendment number one fails. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Chairman Crawford, you're recognized. There you go, Chairman Crawford, you're recognized. Right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I won't have to explain the bill too much since uh, another representative did that, but basically... Uh, this is what the bill does. It gives the elections administrators the ability to be able to communicate with candidates and such either by mail or by email. And that's what the bill does. I renew my motion. Chairman Crawford renews the motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Pearson. Thank you so much, uh, Speaker and Sponsor. Again, I, I think this is a good bill. But what happens? Is there any... If you don't get the email, right, it goes to your junk, your spam, you never receive it. What's the concept? Are you still going to have to pay that penalty or pay that fine? And is there a way that, as the amendment was seeking to do, the folks could send an email and also send sort of first-class mail to ensure that people get it? Chairman Crawford. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your thinking on this, but... Um, uh, I've heard from several uh, administrators and they want this option and there's a lot of uh, small uh, administrations and, and, and administrators that want this so it helps save some money uh, for their locals. So. Representative Pearson. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you answering the question. Any further discussion? Seeing none, any objection to the question? Seeing none. Let the journal reflect Representative Hazelwood and Glenn are excused. We're voting. All those in favor of House Bill 2382, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Ayes 87, two nays, two present, not voted. House Bill 2382, I've received a constitutional majority. Everybody declare pass without objection. Most of the Series table. Bob, next bill, Mr. Clark. House Bill 2643, but Chairman Crawford and others relative to crimes against children. Mr. Speaker, the Senate bill is on the desk. Chairman Crawford, you're recognized. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to substitute and conform to Senate Bill 2514. Chairman Crawford moves to substitute and conform to Senate Bill 2514 without objection. So ordered. Chairman Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 2514 on third and final consideration. Chairman Crawford moves passage of Senate Bill 2514 on third and final consideration. Part of the second, Mr. Clerk, call it first amendment. Mr. Speaker, no amendments filed. Chairman Crawford, you are recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last year, we passed legislation for the DAs to train with the TBI on uh, prosecutions of crimes against children. And all this bill does is it names what we put in place last year, the Gabby Act, after a young lady that was murdered back in my hometown. Do you renew your motion? I renew my motion. Chairman Crawford renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, any objection to the question? Seeing none. We are voting. All those in favor of Senate Bill 2514, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. As every member voted, does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Ayes uh, 92, no nays. Senate Bill 2514, I received constitutes majority. Everybody clear pass who objects to the most recent series table. Representative Travis, for what purpose? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I know I'm out of order, but I would like to welcome Ray Central Elementary up here, the fifth grade students, for coming today on Laura's 100th tour. So thank you guys for coming. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, if I could make an announcement for the body. Um, we have made a consent calendar number two for today based on request for resolutions. I uh, just wanted to make the body aware of that so they can review that in dashboard before it's taken up later today. All right. Call up next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2975 by Representative Darby relative to the town of Brewston. Representative Darby, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of House Bill 2975 on third and final consideration. Representative Darby moves passage from the second. Mr. Clerk, any amendments been filed? Mr. Speaker, no amendments filed. Representative Darby, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 2975 is a local bill for the city of Brewston. It raises the monetary limit on purchases that do not require competitive bidding from 2,500 to 25,000, and I renew my motion. Representative Darby renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, any objection to the question? Seeing none, we are voting. All those in favor of House Bill 2975, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Eyes 89, no nays, one present on vote. House Bill 2975, having received a constitutional majority, everybody declared pass with objection to the most recent series table. Call up next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 1861, Chairman Faison, relative to participation in athletic activities by homeschool students. Mr. Speaker, the Senate bill is on the desk. Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to substitute conform to Senate Bill 1979. Chairman Faison moves to substitute conform to Senate Bill 1979, probably second without objection, so ordered. Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 1979 on third and final consideration. Chairman Faison moves passage of Senate Bill 1979 on third and final consideration. Probably second. Mr. Clerk, call First Amendment. House Education Administration Committee Amendment Number One. Chairman White, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This rewrites the bill, so I move to adopt and defer to the sponsor for explanation. Chairman White moves adoption of House Committee Amendment Number One. Probably seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of Committee Amendment Number One, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. You adopt it. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. House Amendment Two, by Representative Pearson. Mr. Speaker, it was not timely filed. Representative Pearson, you're recognized. Yes. Thank you so much, Speaker. And again, I think this is a friendly amendment. It just adds or private schools. I think homeschool children getting access to sports and athletics is important. But right now, this is just specific to allow for them to be able to go and participate in athletics at public schools. And so want to add private schools as well. And with that, I um, motion for consideration. You've heard the motion, probably seconded. We're voting for consideration of amendment number two. All those in favor of considering amendment number two, vote aye when the bell rings. All those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Ayes 20, 69 nays. In accordance with Rule 60B, having failed to receive a necessary two-thirds vote, the motion to consider amendment number two fails. Next amendment, Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Chairman Faison, you're recognized. I renew my motion. Chairman Faison renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Clemens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is, did the homeschool students have to reside within the district uh, of the school in which they wish to participate their athletics? 
Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, the bill is silent on that. Representative Clemens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are you aware of anywhere else in the code or otherwise that would make that requirement? I'm, I'm afraid about schools going in and cherry picking athletes from other parts of the state or, or town to create an unfair advantage for any particular team if they live outside their district. Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chairman Clemens, this bill was actually passed something very similar to it back in 2013. We're only adding into it this the same law that we passed in 2013. We're only adding into it the sports that aren't under the TSSAA or TMSSAA. So it's the same law that's been here since for the last 11 years. Representative Clemens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Pearson, were, did you? Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Why is it only for a public school and not inclusive of just all schools where these athletics might be available? Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Pearson, I have not had anyone ask me to do anything with uh, private schools as, as it relates to homeschooling. Uh, that's a conversation that could potentially take place next year. But as of right now, my county, Jefferson County, asked me to pass this so some homeschooling students could in, be involved in swimming and bowling and such as that, things that aren't currently recognized under TWSAA. Representative Pearson. I got you. Forgive me. I might have misunderstood something. So this is just for your county. Chairman Faison. No, it, this will have statewide application. What I was saying is nobody from my district asked me to do anything with private schools. And so, by the way, uh, private schools aren't controlled by us. They're private. So for us telling them, that would really be kind of a government overreach for the private school. Representative Pearson. Yep, but they definitely get public money. And I think this body passed $400 million to go to private schools to be able to get SROs, which won't fix the problem that we were trying to deal with. So just because they're private doesn't mean that we don't have any responsibility or any opportunity to help them with the policies. In fact, another representative uh, passed a bill on this floor that ensured that they could come up with their own handgun policy. So that is an incorrect and inaccurate assumption and statement that you made there. Um, the, the challenge that I see here is that we are, and again, I understand, I want for homeschool kids to be able to participate in all types of sports and athletics. Um, I don't want it to be something that's misused or, or abused, but I don't understand the discrimination that we have here, that it's only for the public schools and it's not something that's open for everybody. And I had an amendment, that was an opportunity there um, for us to include all schools or more schools, but our charter schools also, through your understanding and intention, are they a part of this as well? So homeschool students could go to charter schools with these athletics? Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, charter schools are part of this. Representative Pearson. Th thank you so much for asking the question. I think when you're bringing this legislation related to schools and we keep singling out public schools, they need to do this and public schools need to do that, making sure that it is equitable and that we include all schools. So if homeschool students need access to interscholastic athletics or whatever the case might be, let's do that wherever and everywhere that they exist where public dollars are being spent and public dollars are being invested. So we're going to invest public dollars into these systems. We need to make sure every kid gets access to them as well. Thank you. Larry Camper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Representative Faison, when, um, the committee chairman move adoption of uh, the amendment. Uh, it, it seems to be different than what's in the Senate bill that you substituted and conformed to. Could you tell us what was added um, in that bill, in that amendment that was adopted that was different than the bill that you substituted and conformed to? Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Leader Camper, I don't believe that we are passing anything different from what the Senate did. Uh, both of our intents from the House and the Senate to pass the exact same thing. So if, if not, if, if we've added something, he will conform to us. Hang on, Leader Camper. We'll, we'll see if they're s s same or similar. Hang on one second.
right. Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There was a little bit of a consternation there, and I believe we've got it figured out. We do have a slight difference. I think you will like our version better, and the Senate will conform to us. We put in a we put an understanding in our bill that the TSSAA will not interfere with a local LEA's qualifications for whatever sport that they're applying for. So, regardless if you're homeschooled or not, if you can't make the team, you can't make the team. And this, we, what our amendment does make sure that TWSA doesn't overrule what the local LEA requirements for said sport is. Leader Camper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So you're, okay, so my understanding is whatever the LEA say is the eligibility criteria, they have to meet that, they have to conform to that. And so that wasn't present in the Senate bill, but when it goes back, they're going to agree with what the House has done. Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My leader, that is correct. Leader Camper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just a question for the sponsor. So do these um, students have to also comply with, say, like if uh, public schools in the district require vaccinations, those students also have to be vaccinated to participate? Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Absolutely. All the local requirements from the LEA for the athletics to be a part of that, the homeschool students have to meet each one of those. Yes. Representative Powell. All right. Representative Powers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move previous question. Previous question been called. Any objection? Seeing none, we're voting. <coughs> All those in favor of Senate Bill 1979. As amended, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk. Please take the vote. I 76, 12 nays, two present, I'll vote it. Senate Bill 1979, I received a constitutional majority. I'm by clear pass to objection to the most reached series table. Call the next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2728, but Chairman Faison relative to probation. Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of House Bill 2728 on third and final consideration. Chairman Faison moves passage. Probably second, Mr. Clerk, call First Amendment. House Criminal Justice Committee Amendment number one. Chairman Holsey, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to adopt and defer to sponsor for further explanation. Chairman Helsey moves adoption of amendment number one. Properly seconded. Any discuss, discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of committee amendment number one say aye, aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it adopted. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendment. Chairman Faison, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I renew my motion. Chairman Faison renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Any? Leader Camper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, caucus Chairman, would you explain what this bill is doing for us, please? Thank you. Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Leader, when I explain this, you're going to want to rush over here and sign on to this bill because it is so good. Mr. Speaker, remember several years ago, I was at church and a friend came up to me who had in his previous life served time in prison, been in prison for a while. The Lord got a hold of his life, changed him. While he was out, he paid his debt to society. He was still on probation. He was able to find a job, and as y'all know, people who have a felony on their record, finding a job is not always easy. He still was struggling to get his driver's license and work all that through. As he got into that, he finally found a job. His probation officer told him that he needed to be at probation Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. As he pushed back and said, you know, my family brings me to work. I've just got a job. This is going to be difficult for me to look at my boss and say, can I please have time off? Wednesday morning and make it to probation, uh, that, that's, that's, not, that's not doable. So I came up with the notion of if the judge allows this, only if the judge says we believe this person has really got their heart in the right position, the judge can make a ruling that the former, well, that the felon who is on probation can actually do a Zoom call for his probation time. Instead of leaving work, he can actually do from FaceTime uh, Zoom, whatever he can do from his smartphone and work with his probation officer that way. Only at the judge's order, though. 
Don't you want to sign on now? Leave your camp. <laughs> Leave your camp. Right? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Sponsor, for your explanation. Thank you. Representative Zachary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move previous question. Previous question been called. Is there objection? There's objection. We're on the board. All those in favor of previous question, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? <laughs> Mr. Clark, please take the vote. Aye, 70, 18 days. Previous question prevails. We're voting. All those in favor of House Bill 2728, as amended, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. As every member voted, does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Aye, it's 90, no days. House Bill 2728, having received the Constitution's majority, I brought a clear pass without objection. Most of the table. Call up next bill, Mr. Clerk. House Bill 2061 by Representative Hicks. Relative to notifications of mental health adjudications and commitments, Mr. Speaker, Senate bills on the desk. Representative Hicks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to substitute and form to Senate Bill 1681. Representative Hicks, move to substitute and form Senate Bill 1681, probably seconded without objection. So ordered. Representative Hicks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 1681 on third and final consideration. Representative Hicks moves passage of Senate Bill 1681 on third and final consideration. Bobby Second, Mr. Clerk, caught First Amendment. House Civil Justice Committee Amendment Number One. Chairman Farmer, you're recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to adopt and first response for further explanation. Chairman Farmer moves adoption of Committee Amendment Number One. Probably second. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of adopting Committee Amendment Number One, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. You're adopted. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, no further amendments. Chairman Hicks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when an involuntary committed person is released from a mental health institution, the, release, the releasing facility must notify law enforcement where the patient lives, where they reside from, and where the mental health facility is located. Uh, it is done elect electronically and out of state does not apply if homeless, uh, the notification must go to the local law enforcement where the institution is located. Uh, Senator Wally was con contacted by his sheriff regarding an issue at Western Mental Health Institute, uh, which is housed in Bolivar. Uh, the notifications of all released, uh, released of involuntary committed folks come to the local sheriff. And a lot of times these, these folks are actually going back to their own counties. So uh, he contacted the Senator and, and said it would be good if, if they was contacted actually where the folks are going back to. So that's the bill and Mr. Speaker, with that, I renew my motion. Representative Hicks renews this motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Pearson. Thank you, Speaker. And sponsor, just a question about these involuntary commitments. I understand reporting to law enforcement. Are people's families notified if they are being involuntarily committed to these facilities? Representative Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This this bill doesn't address that in any way, shape, or form. This is only whenever they're being released. Representative Pearson. Thank you. And the purpose of letting law enforcement know, like have these folks committed crimes? Is that why we're notifying law enforcement? Representative Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If they have been involuntarily committed, it could have been a crime. It could have been, you know, some other issue that they have. They've definitely had an issue uh, to get involuntarily committed. And a lot of these folks, some of them are homeless. And I think that the, the law enforcement where these folks are from really wants to know when they're coming back. It's not a, it's, it's more of a fact that uh, you know, they want to know that they're there. They're going to be sort of roaming the streets, and 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 honestly, they want to take care of them. From what I'm here, they they really want to be able to just know that they're coming back, and 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 that way they can can sort of look for them. Representative Pearson, thank you for answering the question. And the other thing is, is the Department of Mental Health or any health departments also notified, or 
right now that you know of, or is this only just to let law enforcement know? Because to your point, there's so much more treatment that is necessary for people who might be involuntarily committed. And there's also a desire on my part, and it's something for us to probably talk about uh, after this legislation, to make sure families are notified so that their loved ones aren't literally disappearing for five days and people don't know where they are. Um, and come to find out, we have them, or an entity in our government has them. Representative Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, you know, but this bill only addresses whenever they are released. They are being released from a mental health facility. Hopefully they've got the care that they need. Hopefully they've got, you know, something, uh, a little hope in their life to be able to go back to where the, the they come from. But if they go back in the same situations, man, that's tough. That's really tough on folks. So, uh, but at least law enforcement will be there. They'll know they're there and, and they can keep an eye on them. So, Representative Pearson. Look, I appreciate one of your comments and our perspective aligning here. I, I don't know because to your point, they're going back to these situations, right? That very likely could have caused the troubles that they're having and having more of that wraparound and having that in our code is something that I think is uh, equally as important, if not more important than just the notification also being to law enforcement. Um, uh, you know, Yes, law enforcement needs to know, but I don't want people who are having a mental health episode to then have some presumption, you know, that they're going to do something wrong. And so our effort here is just to notify law enforcement while also right when these episodes do occur, or people are having these challenges. But folks typically do call law enforcement to deal with it. And so I, I can understand why and, and, and how this legislation came about. I don't think I can support it only because it is only sending this to law enforcement and it's not dealing with the other things you just articulated really well, which is the situation that they're going back to. And that's something I would, um, maybe it's even after session, talk with you about because we, we need to deal with the root causes of what is leading to people being or being engaged with law enforcement or being you know, involuntarily committed and notifying other agencies that actually could provide those wraparound services could prevent some run from ever, you know, being involuntarily committed in the first place. And so that, that's why I appreciate your answers to the question. That's why I won't be able to support it right now, but I hope that maybe we can work on something um, to that we that addresses sort of some of those more systemic issues, even if it's just more notification to different agencies so that they get the wraparound services that they need. But I appreciate you answering the questions. Representative Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I renew my motion. Representative McCalman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move previous question. Previous question called any objection. Seeing none, we are voting. All those in favor of Senate Bill 1681 as amended, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Ayes 83, 8 nays. Senate Bill 1681 and received constitutional majority. Everybody declared pass without objection to the most week series table. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Make a motion to move the remainder of today's calendar to the next available space, next available calendar. Proper motion, probably seconded. Any objection? Without objection. Blair Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the message calendar to the next available space, next available calendar. For the motion, probably second. Any objection? See none. So ordered. Blair Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to take up the House Consent Calendar 2 at this time. Proper motion, probably second, without objection, so ordered. Chairman Zachary, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We'll Being passage of House Consent Calendar 2 on third and final consideration, in keeping with Rule 50. Gentlemen, Ms. Passage of Consent Calendar, probably second. Mr. Clerk, any objections been filed? Mr. Speaker, no objections filed. Anyone seeking recognition on the consent calendar? Seeing none, any objection to voting on the consent calendar? Seeing none. We're voting. All members in favor, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Oh, 
Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Eyes 89, no names. Having received a contribution majority, I declare the calendar two passed without objection. Most reeks here is table. Next order, Mr. Clerk. Unfinished business. Unfinished business. Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to withdraw House Joint Resolution 1099 from the committee in the House. And Mr. Speaker, I have one more motion after that one. You've heard the motion. Any objections? Without objection, so ordered. <laughs> Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have consulted with both leaders and I move that the rules be suspended for the immediate introduction and consideration of House Joint Resolution 1128. Yep, we're, we, we got that. We're good. All right. Representative Pearson, unfinished business. For what purpose? Thank you, Speaker. I move that HB 2343 be heard in the Ag Committee uh, next week. That's proper motion. Probably seconded. There is objection. We're on the board. All those in favor of... The motion is to suspend. Sorry, the motion is to suspend the rules to hear House Bill 2343 in Ag. All those in favor, vote aye. When the bell rings, those opposed, vote no. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, please take a vote. Ayes 2068 nays. Motion fails. Leader Lambert, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After consulting with the minority leader, I move that the I move that House Bill 2358 be heard in the Government Operations Committee next week. You've heard the motion. Any objections? Without objection. So ordered. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move that House Bill 1925 be heard in the Criminal Justice Subcommittee next week. For the motion, any objections? Without objection. So ordered. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move that House Bill 2545 be heard in the Health Committee next week. You've heard the motion. Any objections? Without objection, so ordered. <laughs> Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to withdraw House Bill 2468, 2468 from the committee and the House. You've heard the motion. Any objections? Without objection, so ordered. <laughs> Mr. Clark, you're recognized. Mr. Speaker. We have a committee report filed at the desk. Mr. Speaker, the report of the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee to review the Board of Judicial Conduct's recommendation for the removal of Judge Andrew Netta, Melissa Boyd, criminal court judge in the 30th Judicial District, dated March 14, 2024. Mr. Clerk, why don't you restate that? Mr. Speaker, it's the report from the House Ad Hoc Committee um, to review the Board of Judicial Conduct's recommendations for the removal of Judge Melissa Boyd, criminal court judge. The report is filed. It's on the desk. Leader Lamberth, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move that the rules be suspended for immediate consideration of SGR number 1184. I anticipate objection. Mr. Clerk, please read the caption. Senate Joint Resolution 1184 for Leader Lambert, the resolution to call a joint convention of the Senate and House of Representatives to consider and act upon and act upon the recommendation to remove Andrew Netta, Melissa Boyd of Shelby County from the Office of Criminal Court Judge in the 30th Judicial District as provided in Article 6, Section 6 of the Tennessee Constitution. You've heard the caption. Any objections? Leader Camper, is that an objection? Oh, that's an objection. All right, so we're on the board. All those in favor of suspending the rules... Vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Gillespie, aye. Rudd, aye. Faison, aye. Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Aye, 70, 19 A's. Motion to suspend rules. Prevails. Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to concur in SJR number 1184. Leader Lambert moves to concur in Senate Joint Resolution 1184. Properly seconded. Any objection to the question? 
We're on the board. All those in favor to concur in Senate Joint Resolution 1184, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Mr. Clerk, please take the vote. Aye, 70, 16 nays, four present, I voted. I hereby declare concurred in without objection, most week's series table. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, we have a message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I'm directed to return to the House. House Bill 1754, substituted for the Senate Bill on the same subject amendment passed by the Senate. Monday's message calendar, Mr. Clerk. Message from the Senate, Mr. Speaker, I'm directed to return to the House. House Bill 1613, substituted for the Senate Bill on the same subject amendment passed by the Senate. Monday's message calendar. Unfinished business. Chairman Faison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Motion to send HCR 1095 back to calendar and rules. That's a proper motion. Probably seconded. Any objection? Seeing none. Five objections. Order. Next order, Mr. Clerk. Announcements. Announcements. Representative White. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This announcement is for those who sit on the House Education Administration Committee. We always meet on Wednesday from 1.30 to 3.30. We're going to move it back 30 minutes. We will start at 1 o'clock next Wednesday to give us more time to complete our calendar. Thank you. Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to make a quick announcement to address the violations of TCA 1067, Section 245 the Searsucker Amendment. There have been violations and the Searsucker Caucus will convene immediately after this meeting and make an announcement next on next in the next calendar. Thank you, sir. Representative Doggett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Criminal Justice Subcommittee will meet at regular time on Tuesday in House Hearing Room 2 next week. We will pick up immediately following Criminal Full. The Criminal Full meets at 4.30. On Tuesday, we will meet a uh, continuation of our final calendar immediately following House Hearing Room 3. Thank you. Representative Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Insurance Committee will hear the last calendar on Tuesday, March 26. The subcommittee is already closed. Thank you. Representative Lafferty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Higher Education Subcommittee that normally meets on Mondays is going to be moved to Wednesday at 9 a.m. That's Wednesday, March the 27th at 9 a.m. See you then. Representative Capley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, my nephew Walker is turning 10 today, so I just wanted to wish him a happy birthday, buddy. Thanks. Any further announcements? Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, just to uh, make the members aware, I anticipate that the recess motion today will be until 3 o'clock on Monday. So that would be session at 3 o'clock. Mr. Clark, always making people happy. Next order, Mr. Clark. Roll call. Roll call. Ms. Clark, please take the roll. Mr. Speaker, 88 members present. Next order, Mr. Clark. That completes the regular order, Mr. Speaker. Leader Cochran, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the House stand in recess until 3 p.m. on Monday, March 25th, 2024. Thank you. Without objection, the House stands in recess until 3 p.m. on Monday, March 25th, 2024.